Hello everyone. This workshop is part of a series of Mindscape activities which connects people to nature through art. They're designed for people with dementia along with their family and or carers but they're also suitable for other groups such as families with children. Mindscape is a Y Valley area of outstanding natural beauty and art space Cinderford project. It's part of the Foresters Forest, the National Lottery Heritage Fund and the Landscape Partnership Programme. And each of these YouTube videos is accompanied with a step-by-step -step activity guide that you can download from the Artspace Cinderford website. Hi and welcome to the Mindscape activities. For this session we're going to make our very own leaf covered sketchbook. As you can see in this example here it's got a very uh, unique and rustic quality to it. But I've covered a, uh, a couple of sheets of cardboard with, in this case, sweet chestnut leaves. And it creates this lovely, almost sort of like leather look effect. For this particular example, I've placed the segments of leaves horizontally. But depending on the leaves, that you have access to, you may wish to explore other patterns. Now, uh, this example is being used as a sketchbook, but it could easily be something like a diary or a notepad for shopping, etc. etc. And inside, I've populated it with lots of different types of papers um, some pattern papers, some white papers. Uh, some of this is just cheap photocopier paper, some coloured buff papers. So it's got a real mix. A real nice sort of like um, scruffy, scrapbooky uh, quality about it. The pages are bound together with these little ring binders that you can easily find on the internet. You can buy a pack of say 50. These particular ones are three centimeters in diameter. Okay, so what materials do we need for this project? The the leaves obviously will be dependent on where you live. Basically, the larger leaf you can get your hands on, the better, because it covers a larger surface area when you eventually do the sketchbook. It could be the case that you cut up small sections from smaller leaves and apply it to your sketchbook cover, maybe in tiny little squares or a herringbone pattern, etc. Et the the cardboard that I'm using for this example is called Greyboard and it's a 100% recycled card. You often see it on the back of sketchbooks, so it's fairly stiff. Again, you can buy packs of these, size A4, A3, etc. on the internet quite easily. But I would recommend you get something that has a porous surface, not a shiny uh, printed bit of cardboard say a bit of packaging from a cereal box. I would avoid something like that. Um, now, I've also got a, a range of papers. As you can see here, there are quite a few inside the covers just to get a sort of substantial feeling. But um, if you could have a, a look around the house, maybe old newspapers, old books, old music scores, etc., etc., anything to give it some sort of like visual interest um, as well as um, an interesting background for your sketches and for your writing. I've got a standard household paper punch and some scissors and a pot of PVA glue which is what I'm going to stick the leaves down with. Um, here I've got a little bit of uh, stewed tea and I'm going to use that just to wipe it over the surface of the cardboard just to take away that sort of like harsh and neutral uh, colour of it. The first thing you need to do is take your papers and prepare them for the size of the canvas. When that's dry, take your leaves, as I say this has quite a large surface area to it, and a little tip, if you think they're quite crispy, quite crunchy, and um, when, you, when you bend them, when you fold them, they crumble away, just wet them slightly. 
let that water absorb into the leaf and they'll become much more pliable. I've just dabbed it off with a bit of kitchen roll. What I'm going to try and do is cut out sections of that leaf into this sort of shape so I can apply it over my sketchbook cover. So the way I did this is I simply placed the leaf over the sketchbook and just started to cut that shape away from the leaf. You may find it easy to have a felt tip pen and just draw out those lines and wipe them off afterwards. Um, so now I'm simply just going to create a rectangular shape from that. But as I say, you could be using any sort of patterns really. Okay, now as I look at this leaf, you can just see that, that ribbed back. And I'm going to make sure that that's placed upwards. So that's facing out from the sketchbook covers. Otherwise it creates a bit of a, a, a ridge and there's a contact point where the glue can't reach. So take a peek here. This has been out all night, so it's got quite sticky, which is handy. Give it a nice generous layer of PVA. And I can do one section at a time. And the same on the back of my leaf. Don't worry if there are any little tears. You'll soon be able to smooth those out when you put them down onto the cardboard. Just make sure you've got a nice generous layer so it ensures a nice flat stick of the leaf. Pop it on, oops, and start to smooth it out. As you can see, the the glue grips that quite nicely, but you may find you have to find little air bubbles, little sort of undulations in the leaf, and just press them out, just smooth them out really gently. Okay, so you would simply repeat this process for the outside of both covers. You don't need necessarily to do the inside, that's what we've stained with the tea. So continue sticking down the leaves until you've fully covered one of your covers and if you have any excess leaf uh, sticking out around the edges you can just trim those off with some scissors as I'll do with this example. And I quite like the sort of scruffy scrapbooky look so I'm not going to try and get this looking extra neat. I rather like it like this. So let your sketchbook covers completely dry overnight. Here's a couple that I've done previously. I've also given them a second coat of PVA to act as like a varnish as a, as a protection, so you might wish to consider doing that. I've also popped a couple of holes in I used to bradle for this as the card was a little bit too thick for this miniature punch. However, some punches have a big enough opening that you can fit thicker cardboard through. So it's really just a case of putting all the different pages into your sketchbook now. Now, that could take a bit of time, so there's no, no rush, but if you take your clips, it's a case of feeding it through the punch tiles and in a nice sort of like random order putting in all your different pages etc etc and you should end up with a really nice bespoke and I'll use that word again rustic looking sketchbook 
Hope you enjoyed.